Great. Um, so yeah, as we look to broaden uh, our understanding, uh, higher education's understanding of impact, um, Stacy, you've done some extensive work on, on impact channels uh, and, and measurement. Um, how can researchers look to build a solid evidence base uh, using all metrics, open access, et cetera? So I think that the first step for that is practicing open research wherever possible, because that's going to help you increase the reach of your work and thus have more potential for unrealized impacts. So unrealized impacts, what exactly does that mean? Well, if you've got an open access article, there's the opportunity for more attention that it might receive, which kind of relates to the very basic issue of dissemination. You might have your research data reused in areas that are outside of your domain expertise. So some interesting relationships, interdisciplinary relationships could pop up. Uh, other experts in your field might reuse your software that you've created for a research project, uh, and so on. I think that um, metrics, like I've, I think I've been emphasizing. Uh, they're not themselves evidence of impact, but they're kind of signals for impacts that might exist elsewhere. And the numbers really aren't as important as who's saying what about your research. So I'd say that uh, one part of this equation is to use altmetric services like altmetric.com. We have a free bookmarklet you can download. Um, but it will help you if you d download this bookmarklet and you look at your own research uh, and use other uh, Altmetric services, of course, like Impact Story, and to a certain extent, Plum Analytics. You can learn what attention that your research is receiving online, and that might look like a bunch of tweets, um, a high altmetric score. Uh, we have a single uh, number score that you can use to understand the volume of attention that you're receiving. Uh, that could be a paper that's on Impact Story that's got a highly discussed badge, and use those as signals to read through the attention to learn the who's saying what about your research. So, has a Nobel laureate blogged about your work and said positive things. You want to know the positive things, right? Uh, are you being cited in policy documents or are you being written about in places like the New York Times, uh, Financial Times, and so on? So I'd say that that is one way you can go about collecting uh, evidence of impact is using the altmetrics and these sorts of services that gather up the conversations online into one place and using that to dig in deeper to find impact. So I know some researchers uh, are resistant to the idea of metrics um, and this idea of, of a single number, uh, you know, reducing the complexity and and the variety of of uh, a research output into into a number. Um, so, so what would you say to sort of that um, that kind of resistance? I would say that uh, it's, com first of all, completely understandable. I mean, the journal impact factor is one single number indicator that's been abused for pretty much as long as it's been around. Uh, but it's been abused mostly because folks are misusing it. And um, we at Altmetric have created this single number indicator as kind of a way to understand the volume of attention, like I mentioned. Uh, but we don't, <laughs> we highly discourage people from using it, uh, let's say you might put on your CV if you wanted to list all metrics on your CV. Uh, in the same way that we'd say, do not put a journal impact factor on your CV because it doesn't tell you a lot in a nuanced way about the actual impacts that your work is having, you shouldn't just put, I've got an alt metric score of 392 because that also doesn't tell you a lot. Uh, instead, you can break out the score. Um, the numbers of metrics that you've received in different ways and more importantly provide context for those metrics um, like I've gotten uh, so many citations in uh, policy documents or citations as measured by Scopus and here's how that relates to other papers that have been published in this year or uh, this discipline and that's a much more nuanced and accurate way of representing impact so I'd say definitely steer clear of using that altmetric score, any other single number uh, indicator of impact uh, for evaluation purposes, but instead use it as a signal to help you dig a little deeper into the attention that your work might be receiving online. And I was wondering if you could sort of also elaborate on this idea of open science um, and how that um, mixes with public engagement. Um, I think for a lot of people it's two sort of separate concepts um, and yeah I think uh, I know you've worked on this as well. I, ha I have worked on it and yes. Um, I think that um, I think that, uh, that open science started out as a philosophy 
as, as, as a way of a protocol, if you like. And it's done for all, very, all kinds of very good reasons, not least because you know, people feel that there is a duty to share, uh, particularly if you're a publicly funded researcher, the outputs of your research. You know, if it, pe the people who are paying for you to do your research have some interest in the outputs of that research. So I think there is a, it is a philosophy. But I think the interesting thing about openness, as, as Stacey alluded to, is that it allow it open vastly opens up the potential audiences and the potential for people to become interested and to interact directly with your research. So if you are being open about your data, for example, then um, it allows people to potentially repurpose, reuse, review that data uh, for themselves and to engage directly with the research rather than with the researcher. So I think it's another route for public engagement uh, rather than um, as, as much as anything else. And uh, a, a one that's still in its infancy and maybe one that's not yet particularly susceptible to measurement, but um, could nonetheless, you know, it, it's, it's, if we're thinking in terms of CVs, as, as Stacey came round to in the end of her comments just now, you know, it's something very impactful to put on your CV that you know you are open that your work can be accessed at such and such a place so that people who are reviewing that CV can go and have a look directly at what you are doing so while it might not have a metric it has a, it opens it up a quality of engagement that you wouldn't see in any other way uh, just a, a quick thought on that I would absolutely agree um, there's nothing quite like expert peer review or um, any sort of peer review and being able to read for yourself and determine for yourself the quality or potentials for impact for a paper uh, or any other sort of research output 